Now then guys, how are you doing? So in today's video, we're going to be doing the 41212 diamond tactic. What a tactic. Love a diamond. I've used diamond in previous serves. Works a treat. But we're going to try the diamond tactic in today's video. And we're going to try the diamond tactic with Leicester. Now the Leicester team, we're using these throughout all of the tactics videos. I think with Leicester, which I've explained in other videos as well. Leicester are a team that realistically should be challenging for a top four. And you never know, could be challenging for the Premier League title as well and could be challenging on other fronts but yeah we're going to try it with Leicester we're going to try the 4 one 2, one, two diamond let's have a look at how it sets up so here we go then guys this is the setup team selection and obviously this is subject to change but we've got a goalkeeper Schmeichel sweeper keeper on defend no individual instructions we've got Justin out wide complete wing back on attack no individual instructions Siunku in the middle, centre back. These are just set up as we go. He is a cover player there. And then we've got Fafana. What a player he is. Ball playing defender on defend. Again, no individual instructions. Castagna out wide. Plenty on for him. He's a complete wing back. We've got Ndidi and Kaman on defend. So he's the man that's going to shield my defensive four. Especially with Justin and Castagna getting forward. We've got Mazala in the middle, which is currently Tillemans on attack. Box to box midfielder, Prayet on support. Perez, like I say, he is an attacker midfielder behind the strikers. One individual instruction there, and that's to play more direct passes. And then we've got Vardy as the advanced forward, and Iniacho as the deep lion forward on attack. So there you go then, guys. That is how that is set up. The 4-1-2-1-2 formation on the diamond. We're on a balanced mentality in possession. So we're playing a standard attack and width. We pass into space. We've got overlaps out wide. Pass and directness is standard. We've got an extremely high tempo as we're wanting to push that ball forward and push the team forward. In the final third, we shoot on sight, which is fair. Dribbling wise, we dribble less, but we run at the defence and there's no creative freedom. In transition, we counter press. We always look to counter when in possession. We distribute quickly from the goalkeeper. At the back, we distribute, you know, there's no long passes there. And we take short kicks as we distribute to the flanks and to the centre backs. And out of possession, then we're not playing a high line. We've got a standard defensive line and a higher line of engagement. So there is a bit of space between the team but defensive width for going standard we prevent short goalkeeper distribution we want to be up there and forcing them to go along no tighter marking you know there's no individual instructions on there we're just going to play it is and as far as tackling goes it's mixed set pieces wise then from the corners we're going at the near post i've already set that up with both of my center backs at the near post so there in that near post position we've got Fafana jump and read 16 heading 15 and then the lurking at near post Siunko 16 jumping 15 heading and that is the same on both sides so that's the way we're going to play it as far as throw-ins go we've got mixed throw-ins we don't do the long throw in anymore. That's completely been nerfed since the FM update. So yes, that is where we're at at the minute. So as far as the competitions go, we're in the Premier League, we're in the FA Cup, we're in the Europa Cup and we're in the Carabao Cup. And the thing for me is, can we win any of these competitions this season? So we're going to simulate the season by a year and then we'll talk through the results. Right then guys, so we're on the 31st of May, end of the season. Let's have a look at how we're getting on. So league-wise then, we end up finishing 4th place. That's the Simca Champions League next season. 38 games, 20 wins, 10 draws, 8 losses. A goal difference of plus 25. That's not bad going in fairness. For a tactic when we look at it, was just balanced. That's it. So I'm quite happy with how that's been set up. Schedule-wise then, let's have a look at the fixtures. So, September, a 3-2 defeat to Brighton's not ideal. 1-1 draw with West Ham and a 4-1 defeat in the Carabao Cup fourth round to Arsenal. So, we went out the Carabao Cup by the end of September, which isn't ideal. We work our way through October. We had a Group K we were in with CSK, Moscow, Hoffenheim and IFK Gutenberg. So, a fairly easy group I'd be expecting to get out of there. But a 4-4 draw with Wolves. Wow, I hope there wasn't a stoppage time goal there. As Vardy actually scored a penalty on 92 minutes to get us the draw. Wolves have got to be absolutely raging with that. And then we have a 1-1 draw with Hoffenheim. November was terrible as we had a 3-1 defeat to Everton. 4-0 defeat to Liverpool. 3-1 defeat at Manchester City. And a 2-2 draw with Manchester United in the league. How did we get on there? A 75th minute goal from Pogba. 
But in the Europa League, we had a 4-0 victory over Gothenburg and a 2-0 victory away at Gothenburg as well. December was mixed with a 2-1 defeat to Hoffenheim, Wiles and a 4-2 defeat to Arsenal. 2-2 draw with Fulham and a 0-0 draw with Leeds, but we beat Chelsea 3-0 there. What a result that is. Two goals from Vardy and a goal from Mendy. Vardy in the goals, but then January's quality. A 3-2 defeat to Burnley, the big loss there. 2-0 to Sheffield United, Fulham 1-0, Crystal Palace 3-0, Birmingham 3-0 in the FA Cup 4th round. Brighton 5-1 and Newcastle 2-1. We then work our way through to February and it looks quite decent until you get to that 0-0 draw with West Brom. And then Braga in the Europa League first round knockout, 1-1 away and then we get a 1-0 victory at home. Everton we get absolutely smashed 5-2 at Goodison Park. We were well and truly done there. Goals on the 94th minute and the 95th minute, not good enough. But then we go into March which looks shocking in fairness, plenty of losses there. A 2-1 defeat to Atalanta. At home and then a 4-1 defeat away. So we get knocked out in the second knockout round there. So we go out to the Europa League. We also go out of the FA Cup in the quarterfinal. 3-0 defeat at Crystal Palace. Moore well and truly battered. 12 shots, 2 on target. But in March, you know, we have a 2-1 victory over Liverpool there. That is big at home. A fairly even game. Vardy with the goal and 86-minute goal from under. And then we have a 3-1 victory over Manchester City, also a very big result. Torres with the goal for them on seven minutes, but then we scored three, or we got an own goal in there from John Stones. And then throughout April, a 3-0 victory over Tottenham, 1-1 draw with Arsenal, a 1-1 draw with Chelsea as well, a 5-1 victory over Crystal Palace, so a bit of payback there for that 3-0 victory. But yeah, you know, as far as competitions go, fourth in the Premier League, we were knocked out in the second knockout round of the Europa League. The FA Cup went out in the quarterfinal to Palace and we were knocked out in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup to Arsenal. So what about goal scorers? So Jamie Vardy finishes top goal scorer in the league with 25 goals. Not bad going at all. What about assists? James Madison was joined six with 12. Kevin De Bruyne though, ran away with it there with 17. So as far as team stats go then, we played 38 games, we scored 78 goals which was the 4th best in the league, we conceded 53 which was the ninth best, we conceded a hell of a lot of goals, but we were quite attacking set up and very narrow. Even now we're obviously... Our setup was just a standard setup. it's still a very narrow formation anyway, with only the wing backs being any kind of width for our team. Yellow cards wise, 51, one red card, and that is it. So, you know, got to be fairly happy with that. A fourth place finish. You know, we didn't exactly set the world alight. It wasn't a treble winning tactic or anything like that. But just the standard diamond formation. Did a fairly decent job. So there you go then, guys. So we've tested this formation, which is the 4-1-2-1-2 formation, the diamond. We suffered from a lack of width, I think. But on to the next tactic. So, yes, thank you very much for watching. Join me in the next one, which will be another tactic with Leicester City over the course of a season. And hopefully this time around we'll do a bit better. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.